The paper explores the impact of low bit resolution in optical icing machines on their performance for solving computational heart optimization problems. It begins by highlighting the limitations of traditional digital hardware in efficiently solving such problems. The authors then introduce the icing machine as a promising alternative, explaining its working principle based on the icing Hamiltonian. They discuss various hardware implementations, including optical ones, emphasizing their potential advantages. The focus shifts to the specific issue of bit resolution in optical icing machines, particularly how low bit resolution influences their performance. Through numerical simulations, the authors determine the minimum required bit resolution for different benchmark problems, finding that even a 1-bit resolution modulator can significantly improve performance across all considered problems. This paper examines the influence of limited modulation resolution on the performance of optical icing machines, IMS. The essential components of an analog IM are depicted in FIG. 1. With the type of nonlinearity depending on the specific hardware implementation. However, commercial optical modulators typically offer only around 8 bit resolution, causing a distortion on the feedback signal. The paper explores the impact of the resolution of the feedback signal on the performance of the optical IM using numerical simulations. The dynamics of the IM are described, and the feedback signal is digitized for different bit resolutions. The minimum required bit resolution of the optical modulators is discussed, and the performance of an IM with a continuous feedback signal is compared to that of an IM with a 1-bit resolution optical modulator. The dynamic evolution of the analog spin variables in the IM is captured by the corresponding dynamic evolution equations, which describe the temporal behavior of the analog spin variables. The type of nonlinearity in the dynamic evolution equation depends on the specific hardware implementation, but in this paper, a tangent hyperbolic function is used to model the nonlinearity, representing clipping effects well. The dynamic evolution of the analog spin amplitudes Xi is modeled by equation 2, where alpha represents the gain parameter, beta the mutual coupling strength, Yi models the colored noise, and gamma the noise strength. The values of alpha and beta play a crucial role in the performance of the IM since these two parameters determine the value that is fed back into the analog hardware. The colored noise is described by an extra differential equation, which serves as a low band pass filter and is necessary to correctly integrate the noise inside a nonlinearity. The spin dynamics of the analog IM are simulated by numerically integrating equations 2 and 3 using the Milstein method. The digitization of the feedback term is also investigated, where the feedback term is calculated correctly and a distortion on the signal occurs before it is injected into the nonlinearity. This process is visualized in FIG. 1, where the box with digitization is placed after the feedback stage to illustrate the sequence of steps. In the icing machine, the digitization of feedback significantly impacts performance. To study this, the authors introduce float feedback and bit feedback concepts. Float feedback refers to simulation data obtained using a non-digitized feedback term while bit feedback uses a digitized feedback term. Digitization involves rounding input values to their nearest bin value within a predetermined interval, subdivided into equally spaced bins. The bin width is determined by the bit resolution, ranging from 1 to 14 bits. The authors employ the max cut benchmark problem from the Big Mac and GSET libraries to determine the required minimum bit resolution. Max cut is an NFARD problem that aims to maximize the cut number C by separating a graph into two parts. The cost function is given by equation 4, equivalent to minimizing the icing energy given by equation 1. Using the GO5NX problem sets from the Big Mac library, with network sizes of 60, 80, or 100 spins and an average edge probability of 50%, the authors investigate the impact of digitization on performance. They also utilize the GSET library to access benchmark problems with larger network sizes of 800 and 1000 spins. Figures 2, A, and 2, B, illustrate the spin and energy evolution of the icing machine solving the GO5 100.2 benchmark problem with float feedback. The transient success rate, TSR, is defined as the ratio of runs reaching the ground state energy to the total number of runs. 
The authors extract the TSR from 100 independent runs for each benchmark problem and bid resolution. Figure 2, C, shows the TSR of the GO5 100.2 BICMIC problem as a function of bid resolution, with average TSR values for float and bit feedback indicated by orange and black lines, respectively. The standard deviation is represented by the shaded areas around the average. This analysis allows for the assessment of bid digitization's influence on the icing machine's performance. In the context of icing machines, IM, with binary feedback, the authors investigate the required bid resolution for implementing a feedback term. They evaluate the minimum required bid resolution for three problem sets, each consisting of 10 max cut problems with different sizes, 60, 80, and 100 spins. The results, presented in Figure 3, A, show that the minimum required bid resolution varies across problem sets, with a maximum of 8 bits required for the G0560.2 benchmark problem. To determine the optimal bid resolution, the authors perform a brute force parameter scan to optimize the hyperparameters alpha and beta with respect to the time to solution ratio, TSR, for each benchmark problem. They calculate the TSR 30 times for each problem and determine the average and spread of the TSR distribution. The results, visualized in Figure 2, C, for the G05 100.2 benchmark problem, demonstrate that the TSR of the IM with bit feedback increases with bit resolution up to 6 bits, after which it plateaus. The authors repeat this analysis for other benchmark problems from the Big Mac and GSET libraries with results summarized in Figure 3, A, and B. They find that the minimum required bit resolution does not strongly depend on the problem size, but rather exhibits a spread across different problems. For instance, the G05 100.3 benchmark problem requires only a 4-bit resolution, while the G05 60.2 benchmark problem requires an 8-bit resolution. To further explore the relationship between problem size and minimum required bit resolution, the authors utilize larger benchmark problems from the GSET library and define a new metric, TSR98, as the probability of reaching 98% of the best known cut value. The results, shown in Figure 3, B, indicate that the average required bit resolution does not increase significantly with problem size, but rather remains around 67 bits. The transient success rate and time to solution are analyzed as functions of runtime for various max cut problems. Data from FIG 4 shows how the average transient success rate and time to solution change with increasing runtime for problems 100.2, 100.4, and 100.9 from the Big Mac library. The results indicate that the one bit feedback system has a smaller effective time to solution compared to the float feedback system for all three problems. The analysis concludes that an 8-bit modulator is sufficient for the investigated problems, and higher resolution modulators do not provide additional benefits. The discussion highlights the potential of 1-bit feedback hardware due to its lower power consumption, easier design, and lower fabrication cost. The table on page 6 of the research paper presents the effective time to solution, TTS, values for various BICMIC problems using float feedback and 1-bit feedback systems. The second and third rows show the effective TTS values for the float feedback and 1-bit feedback systems, respectively. The last row illustrates the change in effective TTS value when comparing the 1-bit feedback with the float feedback. The paper also discusses the optimization of two feedback parameters, alpha and beta, for each system separately to thoroughly compare their performance. Both the average time to solve rate, TSR, and the average time to solution, TTS, are used as performance metrics. The TTS is defined as the time required to find the solution with 99% certainty, which depends on the runtime of the icing machine, IM. Figures 4, A, 4, C, display the average TSR for three separate benchmark problems from the Big Mac library for both float and 1-bit feedback as a function of the runtime TR. The average TSR initially increases with runtime but eventually stagnates. This behavior is anticipated because increasing the runtime of the IM initially provides more time for the system to change the analog spin amplitudes, consequently increasing the probability of finding the ground state energy. 
After a certain amount of runtime, however, the system will reach a meta stable configuration, and a further increase in runtime will not enhance the TSR anymore. The runtime scan of these three specific benchmark problems is shown to illustrate that the effect of the one bit feedback on the average TSR varies for different benchmark problems. Using a 1 bit feedback can result in a decrease, an increase, or similar average TSR compared to a system with float feedback at TR equals 100. However, for all the considered benchmark problems, the average TSR in the 1 bit feedback simulation stagnates significantly earlier than the simulations with the float feedback. The authors investigate the trade off between the average time to solution, TTS, and the bit resolution of the feedback term in an icing machine, IM. They calculate the TTS for both float and 1-bit feedback for three benchmark problems, GO5 100.2, GO5 100.4, and GO5 100.9, using equation 5, and depict the results in figures 4, D, 4, F. These figures demonstrate a qualitative trend representative of all considered benchmark problems where TTS decreases with increasing runtime before reaching a minimum value and then increases monotonically for both float and 1-bit feedback. This behavior is attributed to the initial steep increase in time-to-solution ratio, TSR, followed by stagnation. The minimum TTS is taken as the effective TTS of the benchmark problem, which is consistently lower for the 1-bit feedback. Table I summarizes the exact values of the effective TTS for both float and 1-bit feedback, showing an average reduction of 77.4% in TTS for the 1-bit feedback system. The numerical results demonstrate that using a 1-bit feedback signal can speed up the ground state search of the IM by an order of magnitude for almost all considered benchmark problems. Although the average TSR of an IM with 1-bit feedback may be lower, it can complete multiple runs within the same time span as the float feedback IM, increasing its overall probability of reaching the ground state. Figure 5 illustrates this by comparing the spin and energy evolution of the optimized float and 1-bit feedback systems for the GO5 100.2 benchmark problem. The authors note that other optical components in the IM can lead to digitization of the signal at other points, which will be investigated in future work. I'm sorry but I do not have the capability to perform this task for you. I am happy to help you with any other queries you may have.